Good afternoon, Irish fans. Thank you so much for joining us for Football Fridays at the Eck. Uh, and thank you for being here for a very special edition of Catching Up With. Uh, our, uh, our guest today is one of the greatest wide receivers in Notre Dame football history. He's a Super Bowl champion and a member of the class of 1996. Ladies and gentlemen, give it up for Derek Mays. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Glad to be home. Glad to be home, Kevin. We're glad to have you. Uh, Derek, we want to get to your career at Notre Dame and in the NFL and all the great things you've done since, but we like to back all the way up and start from the beginning. So where did you grow up? All began way back when. <laughs> well, I am a Hoosier. I'm a Hoosier, man. This is Hoosier country and uh, grew up in, that's right, grew up in Indianapolis, Indiana, prior to North Central High School and uh, don't know anything other than Indiana. And it was, um, it was awesome to make that two-hour trip. I got an opportunity to come up this morning. I spent some time with my mom and dad down in Indy and made the two-hour trip up. It's, it's only an hour and a half now because of the bypass through Kokomo, so that's a pleasure. So growing up down in Indy, you were a, obviously a star high school football player, highly recruited. Was it a difficult decision for you when it came time to choose where you were going to play your college ball? You know, the, the decision wasn't difficult. Uh, I'll say that the process was very long and complex. Uh, you know, when I first got recruited by Notre Dame and I got my first letter from Coach Holtz, it was my junior year um, in the second semester. So it was about January, February. And uh, that was really the first time uh, that it, it was apparent to me that I had that opportunity. Uh, I had been be recruited from some other schools around the country, including Indiana and Purdue, or a little bit earlier. Uh, but that's when I knew I made the big leagues when, when Notre Dame started recruiting me. And so, um, you know, it came down to about four other schools, Notre Dame, Michigan, uh, Penn State, Ohio State, and uh, something about Coach Holt, something about this uh, unbelievable, beautiful campus and the people, um, that made the decision so easy for me. Well, uh, you made the right choice. Um, when Coach Holtz was recruiting you, what did he tell you about Notre Dame that convinced you to commit? Well, he said there's not a whole lot of things I can promise you. I'll never forget, he made the trip down to Indy, um, took, took the uh, school jet down, landed in Carmel, drove another 10 minutes to my house, had dinner there. My mom uh, made dinner for everybody. To this day, Coach Holt says uh, it's the best lemon cake he ever had, and mom actually still believes him. <laughs> uh, but he said, Mrs. Mays, I'm, I'm, I can't promise you anything uh, other than that Derek's going to graduate on time. And mom said, you can take him right now. Take him back on the plane with you. Um, because it's not a four-year relationship, it's a 40-year relationship. And uh, I'm living proof that that's the case. I'm looking forward to later tonight. I'm happy to be a board member of a foundation I started about eight years ago called the Lose Lads Foundation in honor of Coach Holtz. Uh, we're having dinner with him later here tonight at the Monogram Club. It's going to be a great time. All the lads that play for Coach Holtz during those 10 years are going to be back here. It's just a great time. Uh, so for those who don't know, uh, what does Lose Lads do? What does the organization do? Well, the, 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 the foundation has a, a quarter of a, I'm sorry, a half a million dollar uh, endowment with the university. We provide scholarship funds for current um, students that are in need. And we think that's so awesome and important because uh, we're able to give them a helping hand when they need it. And uh, they pay it forward 20 times over. And I can't tell you, this is our fifth annual dinner and uh, we've had uh, uh, two scholarship winners each year, and they are some of the most dynamic young men and women that you'll ever see, and we're so proud of them, and they go on to do great things, and that's just what it's all about. That's what Coach Holtz taught us here, and uh, we find a way to pay it forward. We're in our, a good time of our age with, where we've got young families, and we understand the value of, uh, of putting in that seed right now and watching it grow. That's great. You know, you played for Coach Holtz for four years. He obviously means a lot to you. Uh, what's your favorite story about Lou Holtz? Oh, my goodness. I couldn't get into uh, favorite stories. There's too many stories. And everyone, you know, everyone has a different story. And some of them you can tell, depending on if the family's around or not. Um, I will tell you this. One thing Coach Holtz always says, uh, if you ever ask him about me, he says, Derek Mays, Derek Mays should have been a kicker. He should have been a kicker because he kicked everything around. What time to practice start? What time to practice end? How much are we getting for, for food when we go on the road? Can we get a curfew extended? So I guess I should have been a kicker. That's a pretty good impression there. Uh, when, uh, you know, you came in, your first season was 1992. You played right away as a freshman. 
Uh, what was that like? How difficult was the transition from high school to playing for Notre Dame on Saturdays? It was a whirlwind experience. We, we traveled like the Beatles. Uh, we had an unbelievable leadership, captains like uh, uh, Demetrius DeBose, God rest his soul, and Rick Meyer, uh, Irv Smith, uh, Devon McDonald. Those were our seniors, and that was just a, a great, great, great time to be a part of Notre Dame football. Um, I got my opportunity early, um, uh, and my only goal I remember, i never forget this, I only wanted to be respected by my peers. That was really it. Um, we had a guy on the team named Jerome Bettis at the time, if you remember. And uh, I'll never forget, Jerome was one of my, recruit my, my recruiting hosts. He wasn't my official host. Lake Dawson was my official host. But Lake had a date that night. He had the, a date with the, the most beautiful girl on campus. And so he ditched me with Jerome, and I had to stay in Jerome's dorm room with him for the evening. And, uh, but fast forward to that uh, uh, opening season, and uh, Jerome said, you're a freshman. Freshmen don't talk. You don't talk until the third game at minimum. And so uh, I knew that, and I understood it. We all kind of fell in line. Third game came around. It was Michigan State. Uh, third quarter, Coach Holtz let me in. He, uh, 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 Rick Meyer threw me a bomb down the field. I caught it with one hand. Uh, I was so excited. I take off running back to the sideline, and everybody's wondering what's going on. I run up to Jerome Bettis. I said, hey, we can talk now, right? We can, <laughs> we can, we can be on the same level. So really, just to be uh, the, the respect and the acceptance from the upperclassmen, that was what was important to, to a lot of us freshmen coming in that year. So your sophomore year in 1993, obviously an incredible season uh, here for the Irish and the game that everyone remembers and points to, uh, number one versus number two when Florida State came into town. Um, thinking back, you know, what was it like leading up to that game on campus? Yeah, I've never seen a campus with more energy than 1993 for that game. Uh, and watching Florida State come in number one and we were number two, it was everything that you, you, you dreamed about when you were being recruited. And uh, to see it come down and, and come down to the wire and see us be able to pull it off, uh, that was an unbelievable experience. I remember, though, in preparation for the game, Coach Holtz that week, he was in a real grouchy mood. And uh, he told us, the, the wide receivers, he said, I want you, all you wide receivers, I want you to leave your gloves in the locker room because you're not catching any balls. We're not throwing the ball one bit. We're going to hand the ball off to Mark Edwards and Lee Beckton, and we're going to butt him in the mouth, knock him in the mouth. And, and that's what we did. And it was an unbelievable game and uh, just a team effort all over. Yeah, what do you think made the difference in that game? Florida State was so talented, was considered possibly the best team ever coming in. They had a Heisman Trophy winner at quarterback in Charlie Ward. What made the difference? Because really, when you look back at the game, it wasn't as close as the score would indicate. No, and, and, but what really happened is, uh, Coach, there was some genius to what he was saying. Um, we were never going to beat Florida State with uh, speed. We weren't going to out, outrun them. Um, we didn't have the speed that Florida State had. Uh, they had so much more talent. But what Coach realized is but that's what they relied on more than anything was their talent. So rather than running – sideways and trying to beat them, what we did, if you look at the game film, we ran straight up the middle of the field in between the, 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 the hash marks the entire game. And by the third quarter, they were tired and couldn't take it anymore. It was a great, great game plan. We knew it going into the week. And uh, like I said, the wide receivers, we weren't too happy about it, but it worked out. And uh, in the end, who cares when you get the win, right? Right. Uh, by the end of the season, you know, the, you had a one-loss Notre Dame, a one-loss Florida State. Uh, somehow Florida State was named the national champion, which sort of defies logic. Are, does that still upset you, you know, thinking back that, that Notre Dame wasn't officially named national champs that year? Yeah, there's a couple of ways to look, about, look at it. You know, you can look at it and say, um, yeah, we got hosed and, and it was a sham and this whole idea of the bowl system is just rigged and ridiculous. So you could say that. I mean, I didn't say that, but I guess you could, right? Well, <laughs> on the flip side, I'll say, as a, a BCS voter, I was uh, uh, fortunate to, to be awarded uh, um, uh, a Harrison Poll BCS voter for the last six years, up until last year when they changed to the playoff system. And even then, I knew the bowl system was rigged because at times I remember having my son make my picks for me because I was on the road. Um, <laughs> But my point about it is I learned right then and there that, you know, something had to change. And if you remember, the, the, the year after that is when the BCS started. Uh, so it took, you know, uh, a, a, a country at odds because we certainly were entitled to that national championship. And there were certainly a lot of people rooting for us and hoping for it. Um, I get a kick out of it whenever I go over to the locker room. 
And, uh, and if you walk through the halls of the new Goog right now, uh, they have their Hall of Champions and all that. And, and uh, um, when you go over to the stadium and the lounge, you know, you see all the, the stats. And there is a little stat in the, in the stadium lounge that says, Code National Champions 1993. <laughs> and uh, so I, I take that uh, as a consolation, I guess. I think we need to erase the co. No question. Uh, um, so you exploded your junior and senior years. You rewrote the Notre Dame receiving record books, graduated with the record for most touchdowns, most receiving yards in a career as a Notre Dame receiver. What are you most proud of when you look back on your career at Notre Dame? What I am most proud of, um, when I look back on my career at Notre Dame, um, are the players that I got to play with and to see the men that they've become and to see what they're doing now, pushing it forward, uh, challenging me to be the best that I can still, even to this day. That's what I'm most proud about. I really am. There is, and, and I get the opportunity to, to, to speak to a lot of young people um, in the work that I do. And uh, we work with a lot of colleges and universities around the country. And I get to talk to these young folks, and particularly the football teams and basketball teams. And I say, you guys don't know how good you got it. Um, I don't care how high you get at whatever uh, profession that you happen to Get, be fortunate enough to play when you get out of college. It never gets any better than the four years you're spending here at school. You're playing the game you love while getting a quality education. Uh, you're doing it for your, your, your team. You're doing it for your family, for your inner circle. Um, that's what it's all about. That's what sportsmanship's all about, the true idea of a student athlete. And I can't tell you, when I, I, my junior year ended, and as you said, I, I broke a lot of the records, and I don't know how the hell I did that. Coach only threw the ball about 14 times a game. <laughs> but when you think about it on that, uh, day in uh, January, January 1, 1995, we lost to Colorado in the Fiesta Bowl. Um, and I sat with Coach Holtz, a lot of people don't know that day afterwards, and uh, sat down with my dad, and we discussed the options of me leaving early and going pro. And uh, he said, Derek, you know, you're certainly entitled to. He said, and I'll tell you in front of your dad, I know you're ready for it. And I sat there with him, and it took me not too long uh, to come around. I said, Coach, you, you promised me you were going to give me four years when I came here. Uh, that's the least I can do for you. I want to be a captain. I want to come back with my senior class that came in with, and I want to finish what I started. And um, that's what I did. I was able to graduate three and a half years and, and really enjoy my senior year. What did you study as a student at Notre Dame? Well, communications. I guess that's why I get to talk a lot. Um, communications and film, and uh, I was able to apply that a lot both um, uh, while I was playing and then when I retired. One of the things you were most known for as a player here was sort of unbelievable acrobatic catches and your incredible hands. Um, where did your, your hands come from? Is that something you can practice or do you think you're sort of just born with it? Well, they certainly didn't come from those new gloves that these uh, kids are wearing these days, uh, Odell Beckham. <laughs> I could say that about Odell. That's my, he's my pupil. I've been working with Odell for about three years, and he could certainly be one of the few that could do that without the gloves. Yeah. Um, I think it's an attitude. I think there's something that, um, that uh, you know, you, you, you either have or you don't have, and then you build on what you got. And I was blessed, I think, with some pretty good hand-eye coordination. Um, and then I worked at it. I really did. Um, that was the one thing I knew that I could do. And, and Coach always said that, you know, the things that are your strengths, you better know them and you better exploit them. You know, your weaknesses you got to work on, but there's no excuses for that. And, and I knew, again, Coach only threw the ball so many times, so I wasn't going to drop any and not ever get to see the ball again. Uh, so you finish up your career here and you move from the most storied college football program uh, in history to probably the most storied uh, NFL team, the Green Bay Packers. Yeah, and, Green Bay. And you had a pretty special rookie year. Yeah, fun times. Uh, fun time, 1996. Uh, again, very similar to leaving, uh, uh, coming to South Bend. We had an unbelievable veteran crew, unbelievable captains and leaders like Reggie White, God rest his soul, and Brett Favre, and uh, Leroy Butler, and George Koontz. And uh, I think the timing was right. They were prepared, I know, to go to that Super Bowl the year before, uh, but they, they didn't quite make it past Dallas. Um, and yeah, it was an unbelievable experience. We went Super Bowl 31. Um, I had the time of my life to be able to go from one story tradition to another. It was so unfortunate for me, too, for, uh, to be able to 
have guys already on the team there. So it was three of us that were able to experience that together, me, Craig Hendricks, and Aaron Taylor. And so the two of those guys had already been there. Uh, so when I got there, they embraced me and kind of helped me, um, give me, gave me a crash course on, on being a pro. Uh, but it's really cool because I get to go back and uh, we'll be celebrating our 20 year anniversary next year as Brett goes into the Hall of Fame. So that's a, gonna be a really awesome year for us, 2016. Uh, and we're gonna celebrate it, uh, you better believe. What was it like catching passes from Brett Favre? Well, I got some pretty bad mango fingers. I don't, I don't ever wear my rings. Um, I got my, my wedding ring is tattooed on because I can't really put them on. It's gonna take me about uh, an hour and a half tonight to get them off. Uh, because of Brett, he broke about four of my fingers. We wear them as badges of honor, though. Uh, they really are. Uh, to, to, I was watching the game last night, and we know Peyton's creeping up on, on Brett's yards. You know, he already got the touchdowns. Um, but, yeah, to know you were part of those yards and touchdowns is pretty cool. Yeah. Uh, you ended up getting traded to Seattle when Mike Holmgren uh, moved there, and you had statistically your best season in your first year with Seattle. And then about a year later, you decided to walk away from the NFL. What went into that decision? Well, a couple things, uh, and one in particular uh, was, you know, Coach Holtz always said that the football is a hiatus of your life. At some point, you're going to have to come back to it, whether it's five years or 15 years. Uh, I was going into my sixth year. I was living in New York City with my uh, new bride. Gail and I had just gotten married in June of 20, 2001. Uh, I was contemplating coming back and, and, and making a one-year uh, sort of run for it. Uh, Dick Vermeil had just taken the job at Kansas City. Uh, I was very close to Dick Vermeil. He was really close to Coach Holt, so I've been knowing him since I was a, a kid back here on campus. Dick would come and visit and spend some time with Coach Holt when he wasn't coaching. Uh, he said, Derek, I want you to come out and finish one more year with me in Kansas City. And I contemplated it. Uh, there was a Monday night football game I'll never forget. Uh, the next day was Tuesday, September 11th, and my life changed forever. Uh, my, my perspective changed, living right there in Manhattan. Um, some of my close friends I had to uh, run down there and get. And uh, yeah, I, I learned real quickly what was really important to me. I think I filed my retirement papers within a month of, of September 11th and uh, ended that hiatus and started on something new. And so what was the something new? Yeah, what was the something new? Uh, we moved out to uh, Los Angeles. We started going back and forth. I got into production. Uh, production led to uh, entertainment and sports uh, security and solutions. Uh, I've been doing it for about 15 years now. And uh, lo and behold, just had a, a major acquisition just today where my business got acquired. And uh, I get to do a whole lot of new stuff. And one in particular that I'm doing is uh, getting on my plane uh, later tonight so I can get back to my son's football game. I'm not going to make it here, but uh, he's eight. He's only eight, but he's got a flag football game, and I'm not going to miss it for the world. <laughs> uh, how are your son's hands? Well, okay, here is the deal. Uh, you notice I said flag. Um, uh, I made a deal with him early on that he can play uh, tackle football once he gets into high school, once he decides. And it's not because uh, 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 any other thing about football. I do have enough concussions for the family. Uh, but he's got a secret. He's got a dirty little secret about him. Uh, my wife and I grew up back in Indianapolis. And her dad was the first Indiana Pacer ever drafted. Uh, Hall of Famer Roger Brown. Wow. And so um, all my genes that I was able to give the boy is bonus. Uh, he's going to be a six foot seven, unbelievable, unstoppable shooting guard. And uh, so I'm just trying to protect him from himself for now. But you asked the question, can he catch? First game last uh, week, he had two, uh, two score, two catching touchdowns and an interception for, for six. And I think out of the whole league of 10 year olds and under, there weren't any uh, passing touchdowns. So that probably answers it. Wow. So uh, Brian Kelly and Mike Bray are going to be fighting over him in a couple years, I guess. No question. Mike already got the jump on him. Mike already got the jump on him. He found out who his grandpa was, and he said, yeah, we can, we can get started right now. And uh, he offered him a scholarship about six months ago. All right. So for those of you who are in the audience today, uh, we're going to be taking some of your questions. So if you have a question for Derek, please raise your hand. We're going to have some folks with microphones going around. Don't be shy. Who's got a question? <laughs> Somebody step up. All right, there we go. Hey, what's your name? 
Uh, Dave from Tom's River, New Jersey. How are you? Hey, Dave from Jersey. You guys got an unbelievable subway support system, alumni system down there, man. A lot of, a lot of Irish fans down there. That's right. Uh, it's a pleasure to be talking to you. Thanks for your time. Prediction on tomorrow's game. Who wins? What's your uh, final score prediction? Well, I'm, I'm, I'm not one of those guys on ESPN that takes forever and gives you a whole litany of what and why. Notre Dame's going to win. They'll probably win by about a touchdown or two, and we'll see the, the makings of a new up-and-coming Awesome quarterback. Uh, that's my prediction. Thanks for your time, Derek. Nice to Thank you. you. All right. We like that. Who else? Who wants to ask a question here of Derek Mays? Raise your hand. Everybody's shy today. It's gonna, they're worrying about the rain coming out, maybe. <laughs> we got a, the, wind, the rain's waiting until I get out of here. Hey, Check. Derek. Hey, what's your name? Chris from Canada. Chris from Canada, eh? It's a little bit, yeah. Hey. I spent uh, a lot of time in Seattle, like you said. I, I was very familiar with Vancouver. Go ahead, Chris. Okay. Um, always curious, what did you do the night that you won the Super Bowl? What was the celebration? Wow, I can't. Can I talk? I don't Just know how much I can disclose. Do we got to talk about it after? Or? I'll tell you, you know what? I'll tell you the, the PG version. Uh, right after we got down, we played down in New Orleans, so we're at the Superdome. Um, our hotel was about a half a mile away, straight down the street. Um, so the buses took us back. Uh, our hotel, we had an unbelievable reception uh, party waiting for us that was just for the team and the family. And so for the first two hours, we were right there in the team hotel. And uh, it was locked down just for the players and the family. And we were able to get all the official pictures with the trophy. And I'll never forget the the, the me getting to be able to take, you know, hold the trophy with my mom and my dad and my family all there, and that was really cool. Um, yeah, that was that was that was that was the 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 abridged version of that night. It didn't stop. I know that um, there is a before and after picture of me and that trophy. And the first one uh, is me holding the trophy, you know, official with mom and dad um, at the after party. There is a, a second picture of me with the trophy. And I got my sunglasses on, and I'm passed out in the, on the plane. And it's about 8 in the morning, we're flying back to Green Bay. And uh, I don't know. I like both of them. And <laughs> they both tell two different stories, that's for sure. Sure. Hey, Derek. I'm, hey. Nail, I'm nailing from Seattle, Washington. Hey, nice. Good to see uh, you. I was in Husky Stadium when you caught that long touchdown against the Huskies. You guys came back in the fourth quarter and won the game. Thank you for ruining my day. Sorry that day. That. I appreciate it. Thank Lori Malloy. That's who you thank. Yeah, you beat him, didn't you, on yeah. the play, right? Yeah. yeah. I think I lost some money on that game. But anyways. Well, you know what? I'll tell you a quick story about that. If you recall, it wasn't a touchdown to beat you guys. It was an extra point. And nobody from Washington decided to guard me. I was wide. I, no one guarded me. And, and Ron, uh, he, he wasn't even about to look my way. If you, if you ever find a tape about it, you'll see me doing jumping jacks at the bottom of the screen yeah, yeah, trying yeah. to get Ron's attention. Yeah, I remember that. But So I got a scenario for you. Second and goal from the one-yard line <laughs> Here we go. to win the Super Bowl. What are you going to run? All right, I just got to ask that. All right, thank you. Ask Marshawn Lynch's mom. Anybody else? We got time for one more, sure. Yeah, we got time for yeah, one more. Gotta, yeah, we got to mix it up a little bit. One more right behind you. Hi there. What's your Hi. name? I'm Lacey. From, hey, Lacey. From Upper Michigan, right by. Show me on the hand. What's that? Show me on the hand. I'm, a, I'm from the UP. Oh, okay. It's by, it's by it's Green Bay. It's not even on the hand. Got it. <laughs> yeah. Okay. <laughs> We're all Packer fans up there. Very cool. Go Pack. <laughs> Were you ever subject to any of Brett Favre's notorious pranks? All the time. <laughs> all What's the, the time. One? Well, you know, some of the, again, once again, there's some PG rated ones and there then there's some that aren't. And uh, you know, the one thing that I remember uh, uh, about Brett was um, he liked to pull the hairs off the back of your neck when you're walking when you're in the huddle and no one's looking. It was those kind of pranks that you get under your skin more than anything. At the time we would think that was the case, but what they were really doing is just they were, I, I think they were um, tactics of his genius just to keep us all calm because they would be in the most pressurized situations where that would happen. Or sometimes we'd be in the middle of the huddle and, you know, middle airhead stadium and it's so loud or something. And he said, hey, guys, you got to come in closer. No, seriously, even closer, closer. We can't hear. I can't. I, you guys, you got to hear this play. All right, you guys ready? <laughs> oh, come on, man. So there you go. I guess that's a PG version, right? Thank you. Thank you. All right, Derek, last question for you. You obviously have such a passion for the university still. 
Um, what do you value most about Notre Dame? Wow, where do I start? Um, just, uh, I'll say commitment, excellence, and love. And uh, I don't think that's cliche when I say it. I know what they mean. Uh, I, I knew what they meant when I first got here, and, and I was uh, taught to uphold those and make those the, the, the three pillars. And uh, it, I think if you keep it simple and stupid, um, it allows that focus to continue, and you can apply it to anything. So uh, stay committed in whatever it is you're out there trying to do, you know, and whatever you do, you, you do it to the best and, and apply excellence, and, and then love it. Love everything about it. Love every step that you take and, and, and do it with a purpose. Well, Derek, thanks for being such a wonderful representative of the university, and thank you so much for joining us all here today. Thank you very much. Go Irish. And Derek, we have a, a small gift of appreciation, so oh, I thought that it's was my microphone. Sorry. No, it's the siren. Um, this spring, we lost a Notre Dame great in Father Hesburgh, and one of the things that was done was a coin for his funeral. And because you are every essence of a true Notre Dame man and a man that, Notre D or that Father Hesburgh would have been proud of, we'd like you to have one. Oh, thank you so much, Dolly. You know I'll, I'll cherish this for sure. Thank you so much. Thank you, guys. Thank you so much. Go Irish.